Okay, so welcome to my very messy um, laundry room. And you can see, yep, drying out my swimsuit there. Um, I don't have a ironing board, so I literally just put a towel down on my folding table. And yeah, I'm going to press the seams to the side and then fold it over. So hopefully you can see that okay. Let me get this nice and crisp too. And I'm gonna give it a little steam. Okay. And then it should fold over nicely. Find where that seam is. You want to get it as close as possible to there. Watch your fingers. Give her a little steam. It's so satisfying when you get something so nice and smooth, wrinkle free. Wrinkle free is rarely my life. <laughs> ah, gorgeous. Okay, I will be using the iron again, so I'm just going to leave it plugged in and it'll go in its standby mode. Okay. So the next part that we're going to do is we're going to take the two strap pieces and we're going to go along and press the sides down. Um, I, we're not going to be doing the, the half inch here. We're going to be doing a little bit less because I'm going to be doing a top stitch all the way around, um, but at a pretty thin area. So I'll probably be doing an eighth inch, um, which means we'll want to do... Yeah, so let's, we'll just fold it over, fold it over a quarter inch. We don't want them to be too, too thin, but eh, we're trying something new. We'll see how it goes. If you want it thicker, you can cut thicker straps. I was just going with the easy level hack there. Okay, so I'm going to go along and fold both sides in and press at a about a quarter inch yeah so i'm just going to fold as i go I feel like this kind of style or pattern that we're doing would be super cute um, as a dress as, as well if we did kind of like a button up in the back or something or I guess you could do a zipper. I think it would be super cute to have this sort of pinafore dress um, and especially for little girls or shorts for boys or hey doesn't matter. Yeah. A little uneven but that'll do so then we're gonna do a the other side as well and then we're gonna take the whole strap and fold it in half and hope that we get something semi straight So we have both sides pressed down and now we're going to fold it in the center and press this.
This fabric does have a little bit of give to it, so you can kind of like tug it up to make it even as you're pressing. Okay, now we have the strap for the one side. I am going to go ahead and do the other side. Now that we have everything nice and pressed, we are going to be sandwiching the front piece in between what we just pressed. So you're going to be wanting to match up the bottom with the end of one of these straps because these will be going around your back and crossing. So I'm probably going to pin for this one. Just because it is a kind of a focal point. And I don't want to mess it up. Um, so when you're sandwiching the piece going in here, we will be stitching at a 1 8. So I recommend putting it in about a quarter. our foot. I'm going to put the needle down in there where I want it to be. Press our foot down and we're going to do the same thing um, doing a couple stitches back stitch just to lock it in. And by the way your stitches you should be on a straight stitch and the stitch length I have at 2.5. So you're probably going to have to, like if you're using the same fabric as me, it gets quite thick when it's doubled up, so I kind of have to use a little bit more force to push it along, which is okay. There we go. Removing my one pin. Out of all the times to go slow, this is one of them because the stitches that you're doing are going to be visible and they're going to be right on the front. Okay. My other pin. Always double checking that we have it still sandwiched in the right spot. And I'm actually going to do just a little, a little back stitch at the top too. Reinforces. Why not? And I'm going to carry on all the way to the end of my strap.
Okay, one side done. And then I'm going to continue and do the other side. Okay, so we have the front piece done and it should look something like this. Pretty simple, cute, and then straps go around the back and they will cross onto our skirt. So I'm going to wake my baby up and feed her and play with her for a bit. And then I'll be back and we will work on the skirt part. We've got our little sleepy girl here. She's awake and ready to sew. Okay, so I want to make this skirt a little bit fuller than my first apron, but I also want to make sure that I have enough to make a, another apron. So last time what I did is I just took the sheet, folded it in half, and then cut it down the middle so I could make two aprons. What I'm going to do now is take a little bit more off. So I'm going to probably have this be the size of the skirt for the next apron that I do and make it a little bit more on the front. Um, so I'm going to just snip it here. Snip and rip it. And there's gonna be a ton of like little threads that you'll just have to kind of get out of the way. Okay, so this is the long, longer piece that I'm gonna to use today for this apron. And this step now is I'm gonna go and I'm going to create pleats. Um, you could also do kind of a basting stitch and pull it to just gather it if you want, or you can do what I'm doing and I'm going to be folding over little parts and stitching along that to create pleats because I just like the look of it. There's a billion different ways that you can do this. I'm going to do this um, just on this piece alone. I'm not going to be pleating onto the waistband um, just because I'm kind of, I'm not using a pattern as I've mentioned before. So I'm going to pleat the whole thing, find center, and then mark that on the waistband after and sew it to the waistband. Um, so yeah, I'll see if I can get a better view for you. Okay, we'll see if this angle works and you're going to get a view of all of my um, disaster table and living room right now. Such is life. Okay. So I don't know if it really matters which side you pleat on, um, but I'm going on what's easiest, and that's to have the majority of my fabric to the left here. Okay, so I'm gonna find kind of my first section, and the last time I did smaller pleats, so I just did, I believe like a half inch fold over, I'm going to do a larger, I'm going to do a full inch fold over and then I'm going to do it 
every half inch I'll do another so there will be a half inch separating them. Yeah, I think I'm going to do something like that. Well, I'll just get started and then I will let you know what I ended up doing.
Okay, so the pleats are done and I think they look pretty darn good. Um, so now, because the one side of where I snipped and ripped is already finished, I just have to go and finish this other side. And so I'm gonna match the other side and just do a quarter inch. Um, just to have clean edges, I'm going to press this down first and then fold it again, press it, and then do a stitch there. So I'll be back. Okay, so I have just stitched the other side, closed. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just give these pleats a press so it'll be nice and flat for when I'm sewing it into my waistband. Okay, so now we're going to take our waistbands and just double check, line them up to make sure they're the same length or close enough. Mine's a little bit off, but when I'm stitching around, I'll be able to just follow the shorter one and then I can trim it off after. So take your two waistbands and find the center. That is going to help us line up the skirt, line up the top and make sure everything is centered. So for now we're just going to use one waistband and sew the skirt onto one waistband. Take our skirt that's all beautiful and pressed. And make sure you have, so this side is the right side, this is the back side. And there is a little bit of the right and wrong side on here, but honestly I think you could get away with whatever you wanted it to be. So take your skirt and find center on the wrong side, do a little mark. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're putting right sides together. Find your center mark, line it up, and then this is where we want to pin. So don't be shy, use your pins, as many as you need. Okay, so we are stitched on here. Um, so there's a few ways that you could do this technically. You could put, you could have sandwiched the skirt in between the two waistbands. Um, that's what I did last time and it was fine. But for this purpose and for any of you gals who um, aren't big sewers or just testing this out, the easiest way for in my opinion would be to just do a little stitch to kind of hold it in place and then we'll go ahead so this will be one piece and then we'll go ahead and stitch the the waistband on okay okay so now that we have done the initial just holding stitch for the skirt onto the band there I'm going to do pretty much the same thing um, and attach, find the center point of your top and then align it again with the center point of your skirt and stitch it in to the top side of that waistband. So we stitch the skirt down there. We're going to be stitching um, the top on the opposite side. 
so that once it's all stitched, you flip it up and beautiful. Where's my crayon? And then we'll transfer that mark from the bottom to the top of the waistband. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And Miss Arlo is hanging out. Say hi. Hi. Hey. Yeah, we're sewing. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm just gonna put her pins away. Yeah, I got pins everywhere. Okie dokie. All right, Arlo. Ready to line up our stuffs. And all right. So I'm not gonna pin just because this is a short little area to stitch. Now your sewing machine is likely gonna get caught up um, because there's so many layers here. So be aware of that. And you kind of have to push it through, especially at this beginning and ending spot where it's so thick. Hopefully you don't break a needle. And uh, just a reminder, I'm doing a smaller seam allowance and I'm going to do all the way around the waistband so that these like holding stitches will be hidden. Oh, dang it. Also remember to stitch it on the right part of the waistband. <sighs> this is what seam rippers are for. Okay, so now I have the top part and I'm sewing it onto the top, the opposite side of the waistband that we sewed the skirt onto. So instead of the bottom, it's going to be on the top edge. Because we're working with a few layers here, it might be a little difficult to get started. So you'll have to kind of push it along and just hope that you don't break a needle. And just a reminder, my seam allowance is going to be smaller than what we're going to do so that when we stitch the waist, the back of the waistband to the front of the waistband, um, all the stitches will be covered. Okay, so top and bottom are sewed on. And then now we will go ahead and finish the waistband. Um, so something to consider is when we cross these straps back is stitching those in and I'm okay. So now we are going to mark where we want the cross of the back straps to go and what i did really is i just took took the skirt tied it around my waist and then kind of figured out exactly where i want them and so i have them just a little bit behind the skirt here 
So on one side you can see, I have it about an inch, an inch behind where the skirt ends and on the top part of the waistband, just mark about an inch separate because that's kind of the size of the straps. So put two lines there and fold it in half, fold the skirt in half so we can transfer to put the two lines in the same spot, the same distance apart on the other side. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because that area, I'm not going to stitch together with the other waistband. Um, I'm leaving it open so that we can slip in our um, straps and then when I go around and do a top stitch, I can just fold that spot over and top stitch the straps in. Okay, so <laughs> I have it pinned. Um, so I have it pinned pretty much all the way down on the, um, the ties as well. But I did, so I did mark the spot where I want the, um, the straps to cross in the back. And so I'm only going to sew until that point. So I will be leaving everything that's like under where the skirt is. I'm not gonna be sewing that side. I'm just gonna be sewing the straps and then all along the top here, leaving the bottom open and we will top stitch that later. Okay. So, where do we want to start? So I'm going to start from the end of that blue line gap that I have for the straps. So I'm doing my seam allowance now, just a little bit bigger. I think I've got, I've got a quarter inch now um, because I was doing an eighth of an inch before so that it'll cover all of the stitches. And we're at two and a half. Is that cool? your needle in, lift your presser foot and turn it. We'll do the same at this corner. Needle in, press your foot up, turn, press your foot down.
So it's gonna be quite thick when you're sewing over the skirt um, here. Okay, on the corners again, go until you leave your needle in, lift your presser, presser foot, turn, put it down. Needle in, press your foot, rotate, put it down, and then keep on sewing. Just make sure you hold everything nice and flat. That way you won't get any um, warpage. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to clip the corners here so that you'll be able to get some nice square corners when you turn it inside out. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to turn um, these straps inside out and press everything down. So I'll be back. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and I pressed everything flat on the straps and then I also pressed in where the seam is going to be on both sides. And then I did a dry fitting, so I put it on and I got my husband to figure out where the length should be when you cross the straps. So I will be tucking the strap, I'm going to trim it, tuck the strap in, pin it. And then I'm going to top stitch all the way around the waistband um, and the straps and that will hold these in place. And then we are done. So snip. Okay, so they're pinned in there now. I'm going to choose an end to start at and then sew all the way around. So 
So I'm going to choose the end so that I'm stitching on the front because that's really where you care about the cleanliness of your stitches the most. And I am just going to do about an eighth inch seam allowance. And I'm going to reinforce over the um, straps here. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing the top.